it will be out of the prosthesis and you have to roll this off. This is one of the ways of suspending a prosthesis. Um, so what happens is, you know, you would just reflect this back on itself. So we can get a tape measure. We can maybe measure her. Bring my bag. But this won't be your side, but I have to measure it at this end of your limb. Basically, we'll then roll this up onto your limb. It will come up and over your shoulder, come up into the armpit, and then what happens is this will hold on. And it's just, this actually suspends on you. This kind of locks on the silicone, holds onto your arm. So, and then the pin itself, you would just kind of slide in, and then it would engage into the bottom of the arm, and then again, it would suspend the prosthesis on you. Um, generally, most for above, the elbow, like yourself, have what we call a chest harness. And what we do is we come around the chest. So it would come underneath the armpit on this side, come right across. This is the socket design. Um, this is for the, for the left side. <coughs> but basically what it would do is it would come right up into this area just like this. And then the chest harness would come right across, and then you would Velcro this to yourself. And what it does is just pulls. It's a lateral pull. It's pulling it to you, keeping this socket keeping the outside of it against you, you know, the outside of your shoulder here, or the arm. So this is how it suspends with this prosthesis. You can have with the pin system. You can have it with, with the harness here, all right? Or this one here, which is a figure eight harness, they call it. This looks like a lot of straps here, and it is. This is the most common way uh, a prosthesis is actually held on. Um, that you'll see out there. And what this does, figure eight basically, is this the one side and this is the other, okay? But it comes around the shoulder like such. Okay, and it kind of lays here just like this, all right? And so when you move the arm forward like this, you kind of, I'm bringing my arm forward, the hand opens or the hook opens. The rubber bands, the tension here, which there's about three, they're about one to two pounds each. Um, We'll put about whatever amount that is. So, I mean, I have some patients that wear 10 or 11 of these bands, and that's about 20 pounds of pinch force. So you can hold something really strong with this. Um, it also, this can come off, and you can put a hand on just like this. So in an interchange, you take one off, and you can put the other one on just like this. Um, and then how this works in reference to it unlocking is there's a motion that you have to do, and that is you basically are bringing the arm back, you're extending the arm in a way. And when you do that, it pulls on this little cable here. Um, and when you pull it, it unlocks it. When you pull it again, it locks it. <coughs> so you've seen this. This is the most common one out there that's used today. And why is that? It's because, for one, it's lighter. It's lighter than the myoelectric prosthesis. It's more durable. You don't have to worry about charging it. It could be rough with it if you had to, like people who work with it, you know, depending on what you're actually doing. Um, and basically the hook, which is more functional than a hand itself, um, you know, you can pick up things. You could do a little more fine motor, you know, actions. It's the claw. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. They do make several types. Of, this is the most common one. Uh, they make one with a bigger opening, bigger throat opening here. They have one, it's called a work hook. It actually has a 90 degree angle at the end. So armors and stuff, or somebody who picks up a bucket, you put it underneath the, the handle and it, it won't slip off. This here can slip off. Um, but we have patients, they have this little um, cutout here. They put their pen in there and they can write with this actually. Um, you know, if the bigger, if you get the bigger throat opening, some guys, girls, whatever, they, they pick up a can, a bottle, a beer, it fits right in there, it's, you know. Um, so what is determined, you know, which one you should get? Um, it's hard in the very beginning for a first prosthesis to say which is best. I would say the myoelectric is the best out there. Um, it's probably, you know, um, obviously it's a, it's a prosthesis that works off of um, basically a muscle that actually when you fire the muscle, it, what happens here is that it activates the elbow, the hand, and the wrist. Um, so basically there's a little button here and it just powers it on and this is already powered up here so but there's two inside here there's two what we call electrodes in here one two okay so what happens is and i have the myo tester here i can check in a little bit here 
But as you... <laughs> number one. Yep, so you have the... Number two. Yep, flexors and extensors. So basically, as you fire your, your muscle, your biceps, or your triceps, okay, what will happen is you fire the front, it will open and close the hand, it'll rotate the wrist, it'll raise the elbow. It'll do whatever one that you're doing, whatever action you're in. So being that this is, you know, powered up right now, So I'm just pushing against the front electrode, which will raise the elbow itself. If I push on the back electrode, it'll just make this lower. Okay. When we call a co-contraction, co-contraction is both muscles firing at the same time. So it's your front and back muscle. It's like snapping your fingers. That's how you fire it. That's how we try to teach you. Um, when you hit them together, it should be... It's a little hard for me to do exactly here. Let me see if I can get this. So actually, it's a, a vibrate here. But the hand will open with the back, and then the front muscle will close it. That's so cool. That's something that you'll practice and learn and get frustrated with, but... Yes, there is a lot of work. It's, it does fatigue you quickly when you're trying to use these muscles front to back. Um, again, when... Um, if I can get it to do it. I'm just picturing myself with that thing on and then just trying to run and naturally being like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and that could be a problem. And that could be a problem. But this is, has a wrist rotator in it. So the same thing, the back muscle will let it go one way, the front muscle will let it go another way. So this basically has um, three functions in it with the hand and the wrist and the elbow. Um, so each time you fire both muscles together, it'll either go to hand, to wrist, and then back to elbow, and then so forth and cycle again. Um, but just as you said, yes, you run, you bend forward, you get up real quick. Um, if this is on and you happen to fire the muscle and it's not set just right, um, it can inadvertently just kind of come up. You got to be careful. Um, so there's, there are things you have to be careful with this type. It is heavier. Um, they don't want you obviously driving with this. They don't want you closing down on this. They want you to turn the power off if you happen to be driving in a vehicle. Um, so there's some things you have to be careful. Um,